I'm here in the side chapel at St. Stephen's Catholic Church in Portland, Oregon, and today is the seventh day in our novena to the Sacred Heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us begin with the Gospel of the Feast, a continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. At that time, the Jews, since it was the preparation day, in order that the bodies might not remain upon the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a solemn day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers opened his side with a lance, and immediately there came out blood and water. And he who saw it has borne witness, and his witness is true. And he knows that he tells the truth, that you also may believe. For these things came to pass, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Not a bone of him shall you break. And again another scripture says, they shall look upon him whom they have pierced. And thus far the words of the Holy Gospel. All right. So on this Feast of the Sacred Heart, we are looking at the crucifixion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ, but in particular, just after that, as the soldier pierces his side with a lance and outflows blood and water. Now, if we, if we think about, if we think about abiding in the sacred heart of Jesus, we can, we can enter in through that wound in his side and we can rest in security in his sacred heart. And, and there's a great amount of consolation and safety there. Great amount of safety in the sacred heart of Jesus. No matter what happens in your life, what's important is the moment of your death. We have to prepare for that. From the time we're little kids, we can't say, well, I'll just wait till I'm a little older to get my life together. No, we have to get our life together now, when we're little, when we're young, and when we're middle-aged, and when we're getting older, and when we've reached uh, our, our August years. We need to get our lives right. We need to reside uh, and rest in the Sacred Heart of Jesus. He has made many promises to us, and we wish those promises all to come true in our lives. He has promised them, therefore we can trust them. All right, so you're saying, what were those promises again? Okay, well then let's look at those 12 promises again of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Let's see, where are they? Here they are. The promises of the Sacred Heart. One, I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. Two, I will give peace in their families. Three, I will console them in all their troubles. See, there's where we find that consolation in the sacred heart of Jesus. Four, they shall find in my heart assured refuge during life and especially at the hour of death. Well, you know, someday, Someday you are going to be at that point where you're preparing to die. And someday, if not now, you're going to be troubled. You're going to be troubled and you don't know where to turn. You feel like there's nobody you can talk to. Well, you will find in his sacred heart an assured refuge during life and especially at the hour of death. Sometimes we need a place to take refuge and we can do so in the sacred heart of Jesus. Five, I will pour abundant blessings on all their undertakings. Six, sinners shall find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. Seven, tepid souls shall become fervent, and eight, fervent souls shall speedily rise to great perfection. Nine, I will bless the homes in which the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and honored. Now, I want to bring something to mind here before we go on to the next, three, the next three promises. I will bless the homes where an image of my sacred heart will be honored and exposed. Well, so recently, I think at Mass, I don't know if I brought it up in the videos, but I brought up these Carmelite martyrs. 
who uh, went to the guillotine in, in France. I think it was uh, July 17th, eight, uh, 1794. They were arrested and proclaimed traitors to the French nation and accused of treason because they had a sacred um, image of the Sacred Heart uh, exposed and enthroned in their convent. And for that, they were condemned and they were martyred. So you might be asking, well, if Jesus said he would bless the homes in which his image, the image of the Sacred Heart, should be exposed and honored, well, we have to think about this. Those Carmelite nuns were martyred, but they offered their martyrdom for the French nation. And it was just a matter of days afterward that the terror stopped. So our Lord did bless their home in which his sacred heart was exposed and honored. But he blessed it in a particular way that was meant for those Carmelite nuns, for their martyrdom and for the French nation. Now, I'm not saying that just because you put uh, that you enthrone the image of the Sacred Heart in your home that you'll be martyred. No, that's not what I'm saying. But whatever, whatever your life offers you, it will be blessed. It will be blessed. If you give yourself to the Sacred Heart, it will be blessed. Your life will be different. You will, you will live out the events of your life in a different way than you would if you had not given yourself over to the Sacred Heart. Somebody could very well be executed as a traitor to the French nation and not offer that to God. How many hundreds and millions of, of people are, you know, give their lives, but they don't give it for God. So our Lord cannot bless those deaths if those people refuse to offer them to God to give themselves to God. God can't bless that without, without the consent of the person. But if you offer your death to God, if you offer your sickness to God, if you offer your cold to God, if you offer your nervousness because you have to uh, give a presentation or give a book report or uh, show and tell, you know, whatever it is, you, you offer into that show and tell very differently, with a great amount of confidence because you're doing it for the Lord and he's with you. And he's with you in your trials and your troubles, your prayers, your works, your joys, and your sufferings of this day, united with the holy sacrifice of the mass and therefore united with the passion, the death, and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray that, oh, I forgot. <laughs> okay, the last three promises. 10. I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened hearts. I wonder if he has allowed me to touch your hardened heart today by these words. 11. Those who propagate this devotion shall have their name written in my heart, and it shall never be effaced. 12. The all-powerful love of my heart will grant to all those who shall receive Holy Communion on the first Friday of nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance. They shall not die under my displeasure, nor without receiving their sacraments. My heart shall be their assured refuge at that last hour. And now let us pray our Novena prayer for day seven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. My divine Savior, according to the clear words of thy holy scriptures, thou art in truth our advocate before thy Father. Thou hast freely taken this office upon thyself, and dost unceasingly exercise it with faithful and loving zeal for all those who trust in thee. Thy influence with the Father is so great that he cannot refuse thee, and that he always hears thee, as thou hast testified at the grave of Lazarus. Filled with this faith and with confidence in thy compassionate heart, I come to thee to plead my cause. I have offended thy Father, and have called the anger of his majesty upon myself, I am heavily indebted to his strict justice, and I have nothing wherewith to pay the debt, and therefore must fear the punishment. Besides all this, I am in the present need 
of these intentions where only the power of the Father can help me. Let us call to mind our intentions now for this novena to the Sacred Heart. Let us plead with Jesus for all of our needs and even for our wants. For the salvation of my soul, I sorely need this grace. O may it come to me from the riches of thy Father. O my beloved advocate from thy throne in heaven, go to thy Father and to my Father, to thy God and, and to my God, and reconcile me with him. I repent sincerely of ever having offended him. Repay my debts out of the infinite treasury of thy merits, and obtain for me assistance in my present trial and the grace which I need so much. In thee, our Father, thou hast composed a prayer with which I will now approach the Father. Accompany me, and with the entire fervor and power of thy most sacred heart, as my mediator, say with me, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Adoremus in eternum, sanctissimum sacramentum. Laudate Dominum omnes gentes, laudate um omnes populi, quoniam confirmare super nos misericordia eius, et veritas Domini manet in eternum. Adoremus in eternum, sanctissimum sacramentum. Gloria Patri et Filio, et Spiritui Santo, sicud erat in principio et nunc et semper, et in saecula saeculorum. Amen. Adoremus in eternum, sanctissimum sacramentum. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please subscribe to this video channel. And if you like this video, share it with a friend or loved one. And don't miss a day of prayer with us.